Hey everybody, it's uh, Bat Jack JW. You're tuned in to Saturday Morning. It is the Saturday Morning Radio Show. I got my computer set up here. I got some stuff uh, right here on the table that you may just not see yet, but uh, we'll, we'll show them to you. And I think you're going to really enjoy it. So um, before we kick this off, uh, I'd like to say our last radio show number, I believe is 132. Uh, let's see here. <sighs> this... Uh, pop-up windows and stuff are in my way on this laptop okay uh radio show 132 was the last one we did 132 of these that's amazing <laughs> uh but we talked about the uh, cmp and the, and the 1911s and all that so but uh this one here around is uh it's gonna be a little bit special uh this one is goes out to ed usaf uh, if you don't know who ed usaf is he's a fellow youtuber made some really cool videos uh he goes back to my channel here for quite some time uh, he was subscribed and he did so i think he even did so, a couple of vrs for me i know he did one um but you know and i i did for, some for him and we go back and forth uh sad news we we lost ed usaf uh, ed passed away uh, from battling cancer that really sucks and you know the, the community here and it was nice to see, and I, I must give a shout out to uh, the real Cobra Burnout for bringing that into light for those of us that knew him here through YouTube. And then uh, beyond what I knew him, uh, other than YouTube, uh, you know, they actually hung out with the guy and got to spend time with him. And he seemed like a really cool guy, really did. Down to earth, his videos were always entertaining. So uh, what a loss. And so... Uh, I'd like to take a little moment here and uh, just kind of give this one to Ed and we'll, you know, this, uh, I'm going to dedicate this radio episode 133 to, to good old Ed there. So I'll take a moment of silence for Ed. Well, Ed, um, you surely be missed, but I'm sure you're pain-free now <laughs> and uh, in a much better place. So, all right. And, you know, Ed would not want us to sit here and have a, a downer of a Saturday or anything like that. So, or any day. Uh, so, we're going to get right into it here. And um, we have a first comment here. We're gonna, I, as always, uh, those of you that are not uh, familiar with, because uh, we're getting new subscribers every day, uh, this is the radio show. Guys in the comments, help people out. They seem to wonder, what the heck am I watching? <laughs> um, this is our Saturday morning show. This is when we talk about some stuff and go over things. I got a laptop right here that you can't see. It's off screen. So that's why I'm looking over here because I'm reading comments to people. Okay. So first one, he says, this is from Mr. Holser. And this is probably regarding my comment to me saying I have a pretty analog life. And he says, I, know, I only know enough I know only enough to get myself in trouble. <laughs> you know, and that's the thing is, uh, some people are just so savvy with this tech stuff, this computer stuff. And, uh, you know, they forget about people like us that are kind of analog. I'm kind of like that rotary dial phone. We're not used to this stuff. You know, it, it may be just to you, but for us, this is, it takes a little time for us to get used to this. I still have trouble sending an email. <laughs> Okay, Richard Landero says, um, a poster of Clint Eastwood, the outlaw Josie Wells, um, needs to be on that wall. <laughs> Just saying, uh, one of my favorite movies, I like, I've always liked Eastwood, and the outlaw Josie Wells is definitely nothing to uh, disregard. If you haven't seen it, shame on you, go see that movie. Uh, Douglas Walther, he says, you and Mr. Holster and Santee with Dirty Dan, um, now that would be a great cowboy show. I probably would. Uh, Dan is quite a character, and Santee is a uh, near dear friend of mine, for sure. Uh, Mr. Holster says he's first. Uh, and the Hascat says, "Hey, you guys, did you hear? Batjack is going to buy us all Colt pythons." Uh, yes. If I ever had millions and millions of dollars and won the lottery or something, yeah, I definitely would uh, give back to a lot of you guys because. You've done a lot for me, but, uh, you know, that's just the kind of guy I am. I, if I have it, I'll give it. But, uh, you know, haven't, haven't won the winning lottery ticket yet or haven't uh, suddenly became 
rich overnight. <laughs> and the real Cobra burnout says, um, I'm with you and hold, holding off on the CMP 1911s of the crazy uh, prices drop. Plus, buying on a secondary market gives you a better chance to hold out and look at all the ones that are coming out. Right? Absolutely. Instead of just blindly buying some of them, you really don't know what you're going to get. Let it saturate. Let it soak up. Um, uh, this is another one from Richard Landeros. He says, yo, Bad Jack JW, what's up, man? Will you get a P.O. box for your fans, etc. in the future? Um, I don't know. Maybe... I, I'm not sure. Uh, I don't know how much all that in, entails and everything, and how much really. I, I really don't want to set up, and I'm not trying to uh, get a bunch of free stuff from people. That's not really what I'm trying to do here. Uh, I'm more of a giver than a taker, but I always appreciate all the stuff. I mean, I got stuff that's been constantly sent to me, uh, like this poster, like this lobby card. Uh, um, I have a. It's been not been in videos, but I have a vintage uh, Chato's Land uh, poster right here that was gifted to me from Dirty Dan. I got a really awesome magazine here from uh, Disposable 762. This is if you haven't seen the throwback video, stop and go watch it. <laughs> I, I've got really cool 1911 uh, poster. I would love to put on this wall. I just haven't figured out. I don't want to um, poke holes in the wall, but uh, 454 Packer sent me some really cool stuff, and uh, you know Joe P. And uh, you know, I mean, just even getting to get to use this stuff, Ballastol, my favorite uh, gun oil now. You know, it was all you know funded from you know people that were you know, hey, wow, you can't get that stuff? I'll send you a can, and I got to try it. I went, wow, that's like really good stuff, and you know, and I'm glad if somebody hadn't gave me the chance or gave you know opened an opportunity for me to try it. Like, just simply send me a bottle. I, I just, so it's really cool of you guys. It really is. Uh, Burner Flood says, greetings from Ireland. Hey there, the quiet man was made in my corner of the world. That's right. <laughs> um, Hunts for Food 67 says, winter in Arizona? Yeah, there really isn't one. It's more or less just kind of a, yeah. It just kind of gets a little colder. That's it. <laughs> All right, Jerry Johnson, number two, I guess. I, thanks for the uh, tip on fi or finding your shot brass. Yeah, I was uh, painting the backs of my brass, uh, like, you know, just grabbing some spray paint, like blue or something that stands out. And that way, when you're looking for them at the range, you can find them really easily. What I would do, actually, before I'd hit them, the spray paint on me, I'd take some alcohol and put them, because I use, like, case lube and whatnot. Sometimes I just use um, take like a little paper towel, put some alcohol on it and just like set them in the tray and wipe the backs of them with the alcohol. Not too much. You don't want to just saturate everything, but it gives you a nice surface, a clean surface so the paint adheres to it. So it sticks a little bit better. So, and he says, uh, he has his dad, his dad's Ruger super red Hawk with a seven inch barrel and things, a beast of a revolver. Uh, another awesome episode, Bat Jack. So thank you, Jerry. Appreciate all the kind comments that you guys leave. It really does you know, make a difference here. Mr. Holster says, having bought several of those vintage end frames when they were new, they were not, they would, they were, um, I, I'm not under, maybe it's a typo. They were not lock up tight with no play at the time, at all, no play all the time. I, I guess it, they would lock up really good, I guess, um, Lock up tight, and no play at all. I'm sorry. I, I'm just I typo stuff. I don't know. Uh, all right, Darren Bag Six Gun, another great video, Bat Jack. I'm uh, better late than never on this. <laughs> and he says uh, thanks. Uh, uh, that's great that you do all the shout outs for everyone. Awesome twenty nine. Um, yeah, this one thing is I do. I really want you guys to feel like you're part of all this because you are. Because without you guys, you're. You are a big percentage of what makes this channel click. It's all of you guys. Without you, this is pointless of doing. <laughs> Russ Elder, as a Navy vet, I would love to get one of those, uh, to get one of those 1911s, but not right now, right? CMP is crazy right now. It's very true. 
Joe P, good morning, JW. I have to admit that um, I am one of those who overpays for original Smith & Wesson grips since I can't get a classic, I can't get classic revolvers in California. Uh, I can buy from the classic line and outfit them with vintage grips. That, you know, that's a, um, that, I myself, like, you know, if it's something, uh, and that's a good point that he made. Uh, you know, if it's something you really, really, really want, I think we'll all pay it. You got to pay to play. By uh, great words from my Uncle Milton. <laughs> Lion Quest Fitness says, "Hey Bat Jack, I think I'm going to stop. Uh, I think I'm going to stop listening to the audio only versions of the radio show. It's kind of off, like sneaking and opening your present before Christmas. It's much better uh, watching you up front and personal on Saturday morning. I also like seeing the hardware, <laughs> good show, and good advice." <laughs> Uh, it's really neat. I, I, again, you know, the support here is amazing. Uh, Scott F. Let the dust settle on those 1911s. Good show. Good stuff. That's right. Let it settle down. I'm sure we'll uh, see a big difference here. The crazy Scotsman. He is crazy now. Um, yep, I agree. Prices are way too high. Eventually, like you said, once the market is flooded, hopefully they will drop. Always good seeing the 29. Almost got my hands on one of the Crown Jewels, a Dash 1, but could not get the money together. Wanted $5,500, bucks. Um, that's, yeah, yeah, I, I'll, I'm fine with mine. Um, <laughs> I think that's a, hey, but hey, post lottery, why not? I'll get you one too. <laughs> but also, you know what? Uh, I'd like to say this to the crazy Scotsman. Um, it's really neat that he really uh, sh goes through and shout out uh, to a lot of other uh, channels and everything. This is a lot of work, um, believe it or not. You know, if you want to do YouTube, it's a dedication thing. It really is. You have to be dedicated to this. You have to allocate a lot of time throughout the week to do this and want to do this. If you, if you, you know, I mean, you have to have the drive for it. If you don't have the drive and you don't have the time, this may not be a gig for you. Uh, it, but it's fun and I enjoy it and I'm keeping up with it uh, along with my busy work schedule. But, you know, I enjoy it because and also, you know, I, I know a lot of you guys enjoy it. So we keep doing it here. Uh, Led 8541 says, great video. Love the poster behind you. That pistol is getting old. You know what that means. <laughs> That's true. You know, that pistol reminds me uh, it's getting older. <laughs> um, Edward Petty. Uh, this, that is on my bucket list to obtain a 29 pinned and recessed. You, you, you know what, Ed, come on out to Arizona because it'll take you to a gun show. We'll get all kinds of them. <laughs> walk out. There's so many 29s here and I'm like a rabid dog chasing tires on a freeway when it comes to those things. I just, I mean, I just want them all. <laughs> uh, Mr. Mark Mac 85. Good show, sir. And I love looking at that model 29. Well, I think you're going to like this show, too, because this one's got a couple of nice ones. I'll tell you. We'll get to it. E.B. Saint, hard to beat a Smith & Wesson for good looks. That 29 is a beautiful gun. Yes, it is. She's my mistress. <laughs> All right. Hunts for food, 67. Hello, everyone, he says. Um, TCM, what are you drinking? Uh, coffee? <laughs> um 454 Packer, I can wait for the CMP 1911s to flood the market. Yep, yeah, we'll take it, you know, we'll let it, uh, you know, get out there and, uh, you know, it'll, 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 it'll happen. You just wait. So we'll, we'll see and we'll see a change. So anyhow, all right. So to it, uh, I've been reloading uh, some nines lately, uh, quite a bit of it using, using that molly coated stuff and been having some pretty good luck with it. I had noticed uh, today, actually, why I noticed that with that, um, and it's a Bear Creek. Let's see if I can grab this box real quick for you. It's, uh, so it's this stuff right here. That's what I've been uh, loading up. Uh, Bear Creek Supply, 
out of uh, Waterford, California. This is the nine millimeter TC truncated cone, 125 grain, uh, 356 diameter. Uh, these are, again, these are like molly coated. So that's kind of what they turn out to be. Uh, out of an H and K VP nine, I fellow at uh, I work with, uh, he, he we shot some of these out of that gun at 45 feet and the bullets tumbled a little bit. So we had a couple of tumblers. Interesting. Um, I, I want to know now if it'll, it'll out of my Glock 34, do they do the same? So I might have to take that a test that myself to see if I'm getting anything like that tumbling effect at long distance. Cause um, if so, then it makes me wonder, you know, I mean, uh, as cheap burner rounds, I guess these, it's like five or, um, yeah, 500, 500 in a box like this. Of course it's empty. It wouldn't be like, you know, unless it was like Arnold Schwarzenegger, but, uh, <laughs> um, a box of 500 of these things is like 30 bucks. So I, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see if I can, they, so far I've been having pretty good luck with them out of my gun. So that's a little bit news out of them. The powder I've been using is accurate number two right here. That was $24.95 for a pound of this stuff. Goes seemed to go a long ways. Accurate two, it says it's an extremely fast burning uh double base. You know, all this fancy stuff about it. Personally, don't like the stuff. I'm gonna change it. I'm just using up what I got and burning it up and getting rid of it. Uh, don't like it. I'm just going to stick with my shotgun powder like Red Dot, Unique, or one of those. Uh, even Bullseye, I think, was a little bit better, but I think I'm going to stick with like Red Dot or, or Unique or one of those that, that I was using. So I, I'll just stick with that. Have not had any bad issues with the Glock barrel and those molly coated bullets. In fact, I think the guy that advertises them, he says, you know, that, you know, they're they're, that's okay to fire them through a Glock barrel and all that, even though some people are like, I can't believe you're doing that. Uh, you know, I'm a Glock expert, blah, blah, blah. I don't care. Um, all I know is what works for me. And that's what the thing is, you know, it's what works for you. It's, um, it's if that works for you, then run with it. But, uh, you know, another thing I wanted to say in, uh, in light of, uh, you know, Ed USAF and everything, coming around with this YouTube game and what we've been doing, you know, making making videos, meeting people, uh, basically through the power of all this, a video screen to right there, uh, be it if you're watching this on your phone, a laptop, a tablet, I mean, all kinds of devices these days, you can get access to this content and share and, you know, converse in conversation with other people. And it really is, it becomes like this little family. Of course, you get all these uh, other people that don't have anything better to do in their life than to make nasty comments. But you know, hey, maybe they're just unhappy in life. I don't know, how could you walk around? Actually, Hickok 45 said it best. You mean, how can you walk around through your entire life where you're just like, I'm on edge. I'm gonna say, I have nothing positive to say. Your life really must suck. I mean, I, you know, as I'm just going to be black and white about that. Your life must suck because everything must just suck for you. And I don't know, maybe you should just go in your closet, your house and just stay there. I don't know. Um, but uh, no, man, I, I live, I laugh every day. It doesn't bother me because I'm having a good time. You know, if somebody wants to sit there and try to push their negativity on me and rain on my parade. You think going to work. I have a pretty good umbrella. <laughs> because <laughs> I, I just enjoy life, man. I, I just, I roll with it. It's great. It's good fun, especially getting magazines like this, where it's just like, oh my gosh, this 1911 stuff. It just gets me going. All right. I know almost 17 or almost 20 minutes uh, into this thing. And we haven't, uh, haven't shown you what I got on the table. <laughs> As Mr. Holster likes to say, that's 19 minutes and 30 seconds of your life. You'll never get back. <laughs> okay. I have, oh boy, I know, here we go. I have some beautiful Smith & Wessons and I decided to break out some of these vintage model 19s. <laughs> oh, this is such a beautiful, beautiful revolver. This is a vintage one. It's a pinned and recessed model. Um, 
it's just beautiful. The original grips and everything like that. It's in such amazing condition. Not even a turn ring on it. Don't shoot it much. I have shot it. I do take it out from time to time. It's a 357 Magnum 4 inch barrel K frame. Vintage, no key lock. Uh, the firing pin is mounted on the uh, hammer. This one does have a wide hammer and a wide trigger, serrated on the trigger, checkered on the hammer. Uh, beautiful gun. I bought this. I probably paid like uh, not very much for it back when I first saw it. And it was interesting because right as I was buying this, a friend of mine was buying a Glock 19. <laughs> well, while he was doing that, I was buying a Smith & Wesson Model 19, and I think I paid just about the same amount that he was paying for his Glock 19 uh, for this one. This is uh, definitely one of my this is one of my beauties. I love this thing. It's great. And uh, so, as owning it, I wanted to get uh, I wanted to get my hands on something else, and uh, it was a Smith & Wesson uh, Snub Nose 19. Same gun, only it's a little snubby. Oh, that's some dried ballastol is what that is. Okay. I'm a little worried about it for a second there. Little snubby my model 19, pinned and recessed, of course, vintage. Uh, that's, a, that's a sweet gun. I have wanted one of these for a long time with the original Magna grips and everything. Beautiful gun, beautiful piece. Uh, again, you know, just the K-frame, six-shot. It, this thing is just amazing. Locks up pretty tight there. Um, they've they've actually regarded this thing as uh, they they said it was like a, the deluxe revol snubby revolver or something like that, or the best snubby revolver. It's a it's pretty cool. I must say it is pretty cool. So, <laughs> but anyway, I figured to bring those things out. I actually started to think about that newer model nineteen from the classic line. Speaking of Joe. Joe P. I have. I looked at it. You know, the upgrades that they did to it and everything, it looks pretty slick. Those grips on it are really nice. Honestly, I got to admit, for new manufactured grips, uh, those grips almost do it for me. Just, I almost want it just because I want, I want a, um, I want a range gun like that, that I want to be able to take to the range and shoot it. And, uh, you know, if I want to load a little bit hotter of a 38 in it, I can. It can handle it, and I can do it, and, uh, and you know it's not one of these vintage babies that I'm just wearing it out. Uh, where that newer one does look like it was kind of heft up a little bit in some places. I do like the idea of the, the barrel idea, the way they're doing it now. The main part of the barrel, now this part is like a sleeve, and it goes over it. Now, I don't know. I mean, Dan Wesson was doing that, I believe, long ago. So we'll see. We'll see how all that shakes out. It's going to be interesting, so. Anyway, guys, at 23 minutes, I'm going to get out of here because I'm sure you don't want to hang around and uh, stick here all day. <laughs> so thanks for tuning in. Again, this one is dedicated to uh, Ed USAF. Good man. It's a sad loss. And that's the cool thing about this, uh, what we do here. We meet a lot of people right here just through the power of these videos and whatnot. So it's pretty cool. And that's a... Uh, that was really neat. I'm very happy and proud to know that Ed, uh, he was a subscriber of mine, and I am to him, and he would be greatly missed. So thanks, for guys. I'll see you next time.